This is an NDB or non-directional beacon. They're becoming a relic of the past, but they're still pretty fun to play around with if you can find a working one, which is pretty difficult to do in the USA, but much easier in other parts of the world. We can track to and from an NDB by tuning in and using this instrument called a Relative Bearing Indicator, or RBI. This has a needle on it called an Automatic Direction Finder, or ADF. There are different ways to track to an NDB, and although I've never seen anyone actually do this in practice, today we're going to talk about homing. Unlike the more sophisticated VOR, the NDB transmits the same radio signal in all directions and the work is done by the antennas and equipment on the aircraft to determine the bearing to the beacon from the aircraft. This is displayed by the ADF needle pointing to the relative bearing of the NDB in relation to the aircraft's nose. Note that the current location of the ADF needle head is at 090 degrees. We are going to use the Golf November NDB today, which has a frequency of 269 which I've tuned in and for argument's sake we will assume I've identified. If we now look at the ADF needle, we can see that it's pointing to a bearing of 195. This basically means that if we treat the aircraft's nose as zero and go around in a clockwise direction 195 degrees, that's where the NDB is. Seeing as the tail in that case would be at 180 degrees, assuming that the aircraft isn't too bent out of shape, that puts the NDB behind us and to the left. If your tail is not at 180 degrees to the nose, you've got bigger problems than needing to find the NDB anyway. So the shortest turn to start flying to the NDB would be a turn to the left in this case, which is what we're going to do. As the aircraft turns, you can see the needle show a constant change of relative bearing because as we're turning, the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the NDB is constantly changing. So let's talk a little bit about homing. The idea behind the technique of homing is to keep the relative bearing of the NDB from the aircraft always at zero. This means that the aircraft is always pointing nose first directly at the NDB. The way that this will be displayed on the instrument is the ADF needle should always be pointing directly upwards towards the nose of the aircraft, which is the N or zero degrees relative bearing indication on the display. If the needle deviates from this position, then a turn must be made to return the needle back to the N on the display. Here for example you can see that I've rolled out a bit too early and the needle is showing a relative bearing of around 350 which is 10 degrees left of the nose so a slight left turn is required to get the ADF pointer in the right place. Now the needle is pointing directly up showing a zero relative bearing. The NDB is right ahead as you can see on the map display here. I currently have zero wind set in the sim so there's not much that can upset the apple cart and maintaining this heading should be all that's required to get us all the way to the beacon. We are now over the beacon, we can tell this because the needle has got very sensitive and is in the process of flipping round to the opposite direction, meaning the NDB is now at a 180 degree relative bearing, which is directly behind us at the tail. The Morse code and blue flashing light are because the NDB is co-located as an outer marker on an instrument approach. Not all NDBs have this feature, although it would be quite nice. So we have successfully homed in a nice straight line to the station which seemed to go pretty well. Unfortunately, adding a crosswind to the situation makes things a little more interesting. So we're now in a very similar situation as before. The NDB is at a relative bearing of 210, which is again behind us and to the left. This time, however, I've set a wind of around 30 knots coming directly from the west. We still need to make a left turn to put the NDB directly in front of us, just as we did last time and we will still see the relative bearing change as the aircraft turns. With the wind as it is, it will have a tendency to carry the aircraft through the turn, so this will be something to keep in mind when establishing inbound to the NDB. So you'll see that we've leveled the wings there and we still need to make a slight left turn in order to get that NDB directly on the nose to a zero relative bearing, just like before. And there we go, so we're now established inbound to the NDB with the zero relative bearing putting the NDB directly in the face of the aircraft, as you can see on the map display here. Now though we have a slight problem, because the wind which is coming from the left is going to be blowing us off the bearing that we are established on. This is because we haven't made any effort to alter the heading of the aircraft into wind, but we're homing homie, that's all part of it. So take a look at this. We've maintained a north heading, which initially gave us a zero relative bearing, but now it appears that the relative bearing has changed to 355 and is moving further towards a 350 mark, 
That puts the NDB 10 degrees left of the nose. That's not where we want that thing. So we're going to make a 10 degree left turn to point directly at the NDB again. So that's the left turn complete and the relative bearing is once again at zero. Well that didn't seem too bad, this homing is pretty easy. Wait a minute, that thing's moving again. Are you telling me I have to keep doing this all the way to the NDB? Oh for fuck's sake. So you'll see here that the needle is once again pointing 10 degrees to the left on the relative bearing indicator, which is going to require another 10 degree turn to the left to put the ADF needle back in the zero relative bearing position. The reason for this is simply because the wind is going to keep pushing us off course and we're going to have to keep correcting to put this relative bearing back in the zero position each time. So the heading of the aircraft is basically changing to an interwind heading. So as we continue towards the NDB, the wind correction angle actually reduces, which means that it should take more time to blow us off track than it did initially. So what is effectively happening here is that we're taking a curved path towards the NDP station. Every time the wind shifts us to the right, we're making a turn to the left to correct for it. We keep doing this all the way to the NDB and end up crossing the NDB on an interwind heading. While this technique will get you to where you want to go, the line that you're taking to the NDB is far from direct and is very inefficient. If you are instructed to fly a particular bearing or airway by air traffic control, and you use this technique, then I would expect air traffic control to be wanting to have a chat with you. Plus, if you have a look at it on the moving map there, it kind of looks like we're being flushed down the toilet. So now the heading of the aircraft is more or less westbound, and we're heading directly to the station. Shouldn't be much wind correction required now, seeing as the wind was coming directly from the west. So now what we have to do really is head at the station and make very small corrections. We're quite close to the station now, so the needle will be a bit more sensitive than it was before. Uh, so we're just making small corrections, continue to the station and wait for the needle to flip around, and then that's it. All right, there's the outer marker sound again. So that means that we must be getting pretty close to the station here, and the needle should be just about to flip around now. I hope the suspense is killing you just as much as it's killing me. And there it goes round past 90 degrees, so we've passed the station there, and that is one successfully homed beacon. <laughs>